Hey, this is Seth with In Demand Career. I show people how to get life-changing jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience or education. And that includes my very special guest today, Lance, who was a college graduate with a degree in health education, working fast food jobs, barely making enough to survive or pay off his student loans when he found my course. He hustled very hard and within just a few months got his first digital marketing position, making $51,000 a year working remotely, which is more than he had ever made before. He's very happy with his job now, much better work-life balance, and I'm very excited to share his story with you. Thanks for being here, Lance. Hey, hey thank you for having me, Seth. It's, uh, yeah, man, it's honestly a pleasure to meet you. Uh, been really looking forward to this moment, and man, it's an understatement to say that you changed my life. Uh, I, I just haven't, yeah, man, it's I, I've really been on this path of like self improvement, and I feel like you were definitely one of the key figures in that path. You know, I, I just I haven't had a whole lot of like actual role models in my life growing up, and I really like I was always seeking wisdom from other people, and you were definitely one of those people that I gained a great amount of wisdom from, and you definitely yeah you definitely played a part in where I'm at today, and uh, thank you, thank you for having me here today. You're welcome, man. It's my pleasure. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. And I'm very happy for you. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to be able to relate your, with your story and be inspired by it. So uh, why don't you just start out by telling people the job that you have right now? Yeah. So right now I'm working with a company called Quadient. We are a, uh, we originally were a mail solutions company, but also a customer solutions company. So I'm working on the accounts receivable side of things. Uh, where we provide automated accounts receivable for tier one and tier two companies and B2B uh, industry. Uh, but basically I'm managing the Google ads account and doing a little bit of LinkedIn, a little bit of email and a little bit of SEO. So kind of working in uh, with my hand in a couple of different projects while my main focus is optimizing their Google ads account. And uh, yeah, uh, so far it's, uh, it's been quite a little bit of everything. Uh, it's uh, been a lot at once, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's super awesome. Uh, work-life balance has been great. Uh, the company culture is amazing. The people have been phenomenal. My manager, my boss, uh, is fantastic. It's, uh, it's like, if anyone's ever had like a professor as a mentor in college, it's kind of like that feel, uh, you know, they really take you under your wing, especially if you get someone who cares. And I definitely got I mean, I hit the lottery with my boss and I, I could tell he truly cares about me. So it's just been absolutely phenomenal. That's so great, man. I, I can tell that you love it. And it's and you're going to in a minute, we're going to share what you were doing before this. And I <laughs> it sounds like a very big difference. And, wh and what are you making uh, salary wise at this job? So uh, right now I'm making 51K a year. That's awesome. That's that's a great entry level salary. It's his first digital marketing job. It's you know a lot more than he was making any previous job. And as I said, we made times on this course. It's just the beginning. Um, so it sounds like you said things are really good, and I'm really happy you have this great you know culture. It sounds like you've got a supportive mentor and boss. They didn't you know when when you when, like when I teach in the courses that again there's such a lack of skilled workers in this field. They saw that you had the skills, the knowledge, and the the right attitude. And they wanted to bring you on, you know, utilize your skills and teach you more, which is what happens in these jobs. You don't have to know everything. You just have to show them that you're, you're in the conversation. Um, so we'll get into that more in a minute too. But why don't you tell people just a little bit about your background and how you got here? So like, um, you went to college, right? And what did you what did you major in in college? Yeah, so I uh, went to college here in Conway, Arkansas, graduated with a health or a bachelor's in science and health education. Uh, yeah, uh, after college, took off to Colorado for a AmeriCorps VISTA term, was supposed to serve 12 months, ended up serving six because the program basically dissolved. Both organizations that I was volunteering with ended up dissolving, which left me to move back in with my mom uh, back in my hometown, where I basically started working in fast food, just anything that could get, you know, that could just get uh, money in my bank account. Uh, so started doing that, made it like a month, month and a half. And I was just like, man, I can't do this anymore. Ended up moving in with a friend 
back in the central Arkansas area, was still working fast food, uh, working at a Slim Chickens uh, here in Conway for a little bit. And uh, from there, ended up landing a warehouse job, which I lasted two months before finally landing uh, what I thought was a professional gig in public health and uh, was actually like related to my degree in a way. So I thought that was going to be that path, but I made it three months in and realized I just kind of stepped into a cesspool and I, yeah, man, I spent, I just spent so many countless nights just doing research of just like, what's the next move? What's the next move? Like, do I go back to college? No, I don't go back to college. I have 50K of student loan debt. Like, what am I going to do? Take out another 50K, right? So I ended up finding uh, Shane Hummus, who Shane Hummus uh, found you and found an interview between you guys and uh, immediately bought the course at the end of August. And yeah, started working the course. Uh, man, it was basically just day in, day out. I was doing uh, working at a grocery store too. So I ended up working at the grocery store that I was working at while working public health full time with the public health gig uh, within a week of starting the course and just started the course full time. Man. And yeah, uh, I, I finished the course really fast. Like I went, I went through the course in about a month, month and a half or so. And then just started, man, I just started building the website, uh, building my resume, firing off applications, resumes left and right. Like it, yeah, it was just kind of like, it was just kind of like a wildfire thing. I just, uh, I was just on it and uh, it really did pay off. Absolutely. Wow. That was a really good summary. And yeah, you had the fire, we call it like, which is really important. Like you were, you know, <laughs> you were on a mission to get out of these terrible jobs, you know, good, bad jobs can be a good motivator sometimes I've been working in fast food. And then again, guys, you know, you hear me talk about college degrees. So, so often it's so unfortunate, you know, someone like Lance, you know, he's a smart guy. He has a good heart. He wants to, you know, do good. He's told by somebody to go into this health education field. I don't know who told you that, but you had no idea what the job would be like. And it sounds like that the job that you got was, was quite unpleasant, you know, and you weren't be, you know, you weren't being paid very much. And, um, you know, that can be very frustrating, of course. And, you know, I, I just, I said, I just interviewed somebody who was working in healthcare for like 10 years. And again, it's, it's a very difficult uh, field to work in. Um, but they said, I'm glad it provided you some of that motivation to, uh, <laughs> to move into something better. So what was it like, um, you know, say you had no previous experience in digital marketing. What was it like applying and interviewing with companies? Did you have a lot of interviews? Did you just interview with the company that hired you? How did that go? Yeah, so I actually got quite a few rejections. Uh, I ended up only doing two interviews. Uh, I would say my process was very fortunate. I think it was a lot of preparation and just, uh, yeah, it was just kind of like good timing, good preparation. It, it was just everything just kind of aligned. Uh, and I mean, I did put in the work. It wasn't like I just, you know, sent off a couple applications. I I sent off, man, I sent off at least like, 100 to 200 resumes like I just lost like I wasn't even counting uh, out of those I get a lot of rejections I got ended up getting one interview with a company with an agency actually based in uh, Colorado uh, called RevKey and uh, I got rejected from them and then the very next interview I got was actually the one with Claudiant and then from there it uh, just started off a string of interviews they really liked me uh, in my first interview, they uh, basically sent me some assignments, just basically built uh, using the PPC spreadsheet. So it was just you know, I was so basic for like the interview task. I was just like, dude, I got this. So, uh, you know, built out my headlines and descriptions and how I'd go about it and the process behind it uh, actually described in the course. And man, they loved it. They were just like, yeah, uh, everyone else has basically been submitting a bunch of crap and they aren't following best practices. So from the first interview, they loved me and there, I don't even think there was really anyone else that they were interviewing. I think they saw how I went about things in the first interview and they were just like, okay, like we just have to basically do the rest of this for the HR process to make HR happy. So way they meet, you know, I meet the rest of the team and then it was just basically like, yeah, you're a good fit. We just got to get you in through the process. 
That's awesome, man. And it's guys, that's how it works. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you fire, some people get hired in a, in a week. Sometimes it takes months. You never know, but I think you're the consistency and the rejections are part of the process, but also I think it's really great what you shared. I was just looking into, um, you know, some of the students, um, whether you're in the course or you haven't taken it yet, you know, because you're in a new field, there's a lot of pressure you may put on yourself to think you have to know everything. And to think that like everyone else applying knows more than you, you know, maybe even imposter syndrome. I hear that a lot. And it's totally natural to feel that way. But what you said is the reality. You know, this was a, you know, a bit an agency, um, you know, they're they're hiring for a serious position where you're managing ad spend. And as they told you, they're getting applications that are not good. <laughs> you you don't have to. And I've seen like, you know, maybe there's other courses or other trainings where it's like, oh, we're going to get you into, you know, give you 200 hours of Google ads training. Like, no, you need to know Google ads. You need to know best practices. You need to know what I, that's why, that's why the course uh, is so effective is I'm teaching you just what you need to get the job. You got to show them, you know what you're doing. You don't have to show them five years experience. You don't have to show them that you've managed millions of dollars in ad spend. You are, um, and it's, it's cool to hear that like the assignment they gave you was very similar to the assignment I provide in the course. Um, because again, the assignment I provided in the course was also sourced from a, a test I had years ago when I applied to an agency. Um, so you were able to take the knowledge that you learn, show them that you know what you're talking about. And also they could see right away that you're a cultural fit, uh, which I can get that too, because you have a good, good positive energy, you know, um, and, you know, people that's, that's part of interviewing too. You know, you, you, get, you got, you have to resonate with the people that are interviewing you. Uh, but I think it's awesome that you push through the rejections to get to this point, guys, because it only takes one. That's what you have to remember. You just need, you know, you can get 99 no's. You just need one yes. <laughs> That's all you need. And you'll and you'll never remember the no's once you get the job. Right. Like you'll just you're just focused on the job. Um, so uh, so that's awesome. So what was it like when you actually got the offer letter and got hired? How did that feel? Man, it felt great, um, especially because, I man, it was just, it was definitely a bit of a longer process for me, longer than what I'm used to, for sure. Uh, man, because like the whole interview process, I went through four interviews, and it took about a month, uh, yeah, about a month and a half or so, like, just like actually doing the interviews. So after the fourth interview, I got hit with the offer, and, you know, like when they, uh, when I was first called and contacted for the screening call, they asked me, you know, like, what's the minimum salary? And, uh, you know, just from what I'd been earning before, I didn't like, to me, I was just like, man, I'm not going to ask for like 50 K right off the bat. It's like, honestly, like I know where this is going to lead. So like it, to me, it didn't necessarily matter what they even started me out here. I was just like, I know what this job entails. I know I'm building a skill here that's going to pay me more down the line. Like I'm learning a specialized skill regardless so of course I was just like, man, like if you guys just pay me 35 K, like I'll make, like, we'll make the rest happen. And, uh, after that fourth interview, I ended up getting hit with that 51 K offer. And I, I, I think I said, thank you about five times to my boss. He's probably like, man, it's just, it's just 50 K. And I was just like, I don't know, to me, it was just like, what? Like you're paying me 51 K for, you know, building my own website and like doing this. Like, I know it shows initiative and I know like it shows that I'm willing to, actually put in the work and learn and everything but man no it felt great uh especially like uh just me being on the path that I'm on I'm just really being on this uh debt-free journey of trying to just pay off all student loan debt and all credit card debt so to me like what I saw was okay now I'm building this skill and I can make more than enough money to support myself I don't have any kids I'm not married so 51K is going to go a long way for me. And then on top of that, man, like I just saw like the student debt just melting away and started doing the math on that. And it was just, yeah, it was just astronomical how fast I'm going to be able to pay this debt off compared to making uh, 35K and then especially compared to making 12 an hour working uh, fast food. Fast food. Wow. Yeah, man, that's amazing. And I love, you know, you said, I think, you know, an interview for a fast food job is not, they're not going to put you through four rounds of interviews to, you know, cook French fries, right? But this is <laughs> yeah, a serious no. job. It's not just a, it's not just a job. It's, it's, you said you're building a skill set and experience. It's going to leverage you to your next job and start your career. So uh, it, okay. it, it's awesome. You can see the value in that. I'm sure they, <laughs> and it's great of the company that, you know, they, they knew they couldn't pay you 35k it's not appropriate that's too little 
Um, that means it's a good company. And it sounds like the boss, uh, from what you said, is also, it's a good, it's a good place to work. And honestly, companies are smarter. They have to be that way because now they've treated you well. So as you progress in your career, they'll probably give you a good raise and, you know, so that you don't leave. Because once you get that year of experience managing these ads accounts, you're going to get hit up by other recruiters to try to get you to go to another company. Um, but, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm really happy for you that you're able to pay off your debt. You know, that's like I said, that's one of the one of the reasons, guys, you know, why am I still so passionate about trying to talk people out of going to college or just at least teach them what they're getting into is because, yeah, when you graduate and you can't find that job and you got 50 grand or 70 grand in debt, it feels like you're being strangled. I mean, it doesn't feel good, does it? <laughs> and no, it honestly, it's, uh, man, it's felt like I've been underwater and it really hurt, especially doing the whole uh, AmeriCorps VISTA term because I was making, I mean, I was making five an hour doing the volunteer thing. And that was because the only reason I even went into that was because I couldn't get a job straight out of college. Like the local health department didn't even want to hire me straight out of college. So I went and get, like went and made five an hour doing volunteer work in Colorado. Like, dude, I was on a Mormon farm milking their goats, uh, paying 700 a month, like just, uh, you know, just milking their goats, uh, doing my volunteer stuff. And you know, just trying to make ends meet. And then, you know, just to come from that to actually being able to support myself, man, it's just been, yeah, it's been truly a blessing. Uh, but no, it's, uh, it, it basically, it basically felt like I was drowning the whole time. Uh, I knew something had to change, uh, definitely had to change, or I, I just wasn't going to make it mental health wise. Like I just felt like uh, I was just going to pop. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad, you know, appreciate you sharing that. I'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate to that, guys. Because again, you're really being sold an illusion when you're in high school and in college. I mean, they're really, everybody, the guidance counselors, the parents, your teachers, they are not telling you the truth. That's what frustrates me and why I keep saying it. They're just, if if they just, well, if they told you the truth, you might not go. <laughs> and and they, the colleges wouldn't get their uh, their money. But the, the just, you know, the, you know, it's unfortunate that, People in our society who want to do good, like you, you want to work in health, right? Especially healthcare. Um, you know, people who are in social work, these fields pay so little, and they seem to really exhaust people. And even um, when I interviewed Javier years ago, and he's he's a, 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 like a um, he was a chemist or a biologist, he's doing a PhD program. He's like a high level scientist, and he was also being paid like nothing, like three dollars an hour to do this very important work. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, and I, I think it's crazy that you ended up working for, I mean, the $5 an hour is much less than minimum wage. I don't even know how that is even possible. And as you said, it takes a toll on your mental health. You have $50,000 in debt and you're not making any money. And this is, again, this is the path that you were told is like the secure path. Um, so what I what I enjoy about teaching people about digital marketing is that, you know, I'm, I think America in the Western world is very much about extremes because you have these people doing, you know, social work and healthcare making nothing. And then you've got people on like Wall Street and, you know, investment bankers making millions. I think digital marketing is right in the middle where you can have a high value skill set that will not suck your soul <laughs> and not take 80 hours a week uh, from your life. So um, uh, building on that point, what's it like actually doing the job, especially compared to the fast food jobs? What does it feel like to get up and do this job every morning? Holy crap. It's been, it's, it's so much more flexible because like it, like it feels like I'm working less, but I'm not like I'm coming up with all these ideas. We're doing all these projects. I mean, I'm in the account. Uh, you know, it's like everything's getting done, but at the same time, you know, if I, I want to go walk around the neighborhood I can go do that where it's like I'm not on someone else's time I'm on my own time even though that I'm working you know I'm still working for this company like I'm on their time but at the same time I have the flexibility to be on my time it's like okay when do I want to get my most focused work done when do I want like when do I want to go on my walk you know as long as like really it's like as long as I'm attending my meetings I'm in the account I'm making sure I'm doing my stuff and I'm going above and beyond it's like no one's asking me any questions. They're not like, did you get in your eight hours? Did you take your 15 minute break? You know, <laughs> you know, I'm so used to that structured, uh, 
you know, that structure being at a physical like fast food joint where like they make you like clock out for 30 minutes. Is, there's none of that. There's none of that. I don't even fill out a timesheet anymore. Like when I asked my boss, you know, where do I submit my timesheet? He was like, <laughs> he was like, dude, your salary now, like <laughs> you don't, you don't submit anything. So, I mean, it's just been, it's been so much more uh, in tune with like who I am as a person. Uh, so like, you know, if I really, like, if I want to take care of myself, I'm able to do that. Whereas like, I couldn't do that without clocking out or losing pay before. Uh, so now it's like, okay, as long as my stuff is getting done and I'm still hitting the measures that I know I'm capable of hitting, then no one's, no one's breathing down my neck. I'm not getting micromanaged. And that feels amazing. It's a big weight off my chest for sure. That's so great, man. Yeah, I think you, you you put it really well. I've talked to so many students who had that previous experience to their other jobs. Even another woman I interviewed years ago who was working in healthcare, it was the same thing. Was, yeah, if you're working in retail or food service, anything, you're, you're on this clock every moment of the day, somebody's watching. And here you're treated like an adult, just get your work done. And yeah, it sounds like it's been really transformational for you, which is, which is awesome. Um, I was to say, what uh, uh, what does your uh, your friends or family think um of this career change? Were they supportive? Were they were they not? Were they happy for you? Yeah, I would say that they're definitely happy. Uh, I don't think they necessarily understand fully what I do. Uh, especially my uh my uh, nana, or my grandma. She uh she doesn't really get it. But you know, no one has been unsupportive of me doing this. Uh. Yeah, I haven't any, had anyone be like, oh, you know, that's stupid or that doesn't make sense. Like, what is that? Like, everyone's just kind of either been like, oh, that's awesome. Or uh, what is that? Like, what like what exactly does it entail? And they, I mean, it's, I'm just like, just think like, uh, I always kind of put it in like the simplest terms. I'm just like, you know, like you search something into Google and Google gives you like these top three options. I'm I'm managing the accounts of like those top three options for certain things that people type into Google. And they're like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> so well, well said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It took my parents like a couple of years to understand it. And my dad even even today I was talking with him about some issue. And he yeah, I I, I told him to watch my webinar. I said, watch my webinar so we can talk about this. Um <laughs> But uh, that that's great, man. And um, I think the yeah, it's it, I'm really happy for you. Um, oh, last I was just going to ask you a detail. So and you live in Arkansas. Where is the company that you work for based out of? Man, so they have multiple locations. They actually have a home office here in the United States. But it, so the company was originally founded as Neopost. It's now been rebranded into Quadient. Uh, it's originally. Based. I think their headquarters is in France. Uh, they have a home office also in Canada. Uh, so it's kind of all over the place. Like it's, yeah, it's international. We have a UK team. So I'm working with a UK team, a Canadian team. Um, and we have some people in the United States as well. Uh, some of our like creative team is based in France. Uh, but yeah, the original, I, the big headquarters is in France right now. Oh, wow. I didn't expect that. I thought you were going to say it's in like, you know, California or New York or something. That's really an interesting guys. It's so that's awesome. And so you're, you're interact, interacting with international, you're meeting people internationally, which is, which is also has its own, you know, is an experience. Not many, many folks get, you know, you're working, if you're just working locally, um, your boss, what, your, your manager, where's, where are they based? Yeah. My boss is based in Canada. Uh, so we're part of the Norham team, which is North America team. And we're basically just kind of working together with uh, between like the Canadian team and uh, the United States team and a little bit of the UK team as well. That's so great, man. I mean, you're getting like not just digital marketing, you're getting like, you know, just communication and team building skills and all these soft skills that, again, they're not <laughs> they're important. But like, you know, what I show you in the walkthrough videos is that, I mean, you 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 if you're applying for a. PPC or SEO position, you need the hard skills. The soft skills are a bonus. Um, a lot of people have said the, the people who are applying for your job, 
Um, when I do those walkthrough videos, I show you how on LinkedIn Premium, a lot of people put those soft skills as their skill set, like team building and communication and things like that. And again, it's it's an it's just going to keep adding to your value as 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 an employee um, as you progress in this field um, as a soft skill. But the the meat and potatoes is the PPC and you know the ability to manage these accounts, which is what got you the job. Uh, mixed in with your personality and you know everything else about you, man. I, I I think your story is great. I'm really really happy for you. I'm so happy you're not working in fast food or in that you know health healthcare job anymore. Um, can uh, can people reach out to you if they have any questions? Reach out to you on LinkedIn. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I don't. If you want to leave my link in any kind of video or description, uh, you know, find me at Lance Phipps. Uh, on LinkedIn. Yeah, feel free to reach out. I'm actually speaking to a couple people in the course as well, uh, just sending over job positions. So especially if you're PPC, I see a lot of stuff pop up on my feed. Definitely reach out if you like me to just send over stuff that I see coming my way. I'm definitely trying to, you know, just help out as much as I can in terms of just like, you know, helping people find those entry level positions. And, uh, you know, if anyone's just interested in talking to me about the journey and what I did, especially with my timeline just being so short, uh, would definitely love to speak some motivation into individuals. So yeah, definitely, definitely reach out to me. That's so great, man. And uh, I really appreciate that. That's what makes the course special is you guys, a community of people supporting each other. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to me or anybody watching the interview, maybe who hasn't taken the course yet? Absolutely. Uh, really touching on the point that we've made here uh, that you don't need to know everything. Um, the first week of starting this position, I put a lot of pressure on myself and wound myself up because there was a lot going on. And, uh, you know, I kept questioning myself. I'm just like, man, do I know what I'm doing? Like, you know, and uh, at the end of the day, this isn't rocket science. You're not, you're not just in here doing like algebraic equations and, you know, trying, uh, you're not trying to cure world hunger here. It's, uh, it's basically just get in there, get in the account or whatever you're doing and just like be curious, just be a sponge, learn as much as you can ask questions you know, ask like, why is this working? Why is this not working? Test different ideas, be confident, come to the table, come to meetings with ideas. Don't just like be in the background, uh, you know, and that's, you know, that's for those once you do land the job. It's, uh, it's just, yeah, I, I feel like it can definitely be easy to get swept up by all of the pressure of just like feeling like you have to be like this expert, you know, and that's, and that's just not true. That's why these are entry level jobs. Uh, and especially if you get a good boss, man, uh, just just know if you get a great boss, you can ask your boss anything and run ideas and bounce ideas off of them. And there's no such thing as a stupid idea. Uh, <laughs> if it's not a good idea, they're, he's going to tell it or he or she's going to tell you, like, hey, man, like I've done this before. It doesn't work. Or, you know, this is just marketing BS. Like they'll let you know. But that's like that's the best kind of boss that you could ask for. But uh, yeah, just don't put don't put a lot of pressure on yourself thinking that you have to be this uh, guru right off the gate. Um, yeah, this is just this is just the beginning. That's really great, man. That's good advice. And I think you give a good context because obviously, yeah, I mean, people see these interviews, they get inspired, they see what's possible. Then you get into the course and you are learning so much new stuff. It can feel overwhelming and you may feel like you need to be an expert. But as you're as you're demonstrating, you you don't. <laughs> you do need to know a lot, but that's part of the fun is what you're talking about. It's like fun to learn. Um, and but could you speak, you're kind of speaking a little bit about, you know, people once they get the job, what would you say to somebody who's just thinking about signing up for the course, who doesn't know anything about digital marketing at all, or someone who just started the course, like that type of a person, what would you say? Yeah, to that person, I would say, stick with the process just just go all in don't 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 just dip your toe in don't think oh i'm just going to do this a couple hours a week no every every day and i know that sounds to to the average human being that may sound <laughs> that may sound rough but i i didn't land this job as fast as i did by doing it a couple hours a week it was more like a couple hours a day and i wasn't doing this full time like it wasn't like 8 hours a day of me like sending out resumes 
and studying the course. No, you know, just even like an hour a day, like just put in that consistent time every single day, every single day, just wake up and do something. If you need to schedule it in the morning and that's the only time that you're going to do it because you work and you're tired when you come home from work, then that's by all means, like lose a little bit of sleep for a little bit. It's not going to kill you, especially if your mission is to get out of the position that you're in and you want to change your life. You've got to like, you've got to act radical sometimes. And you just got to go all in on something like this. This isn't something you can be lukewarm on. You, you just got to go in hot. That's great advice, man. You know, I was thinking about like when I even made the course or when I started, you know, my career, I was in the same, I was, I was just eating, <laughs> sleeping, drinking, digital marketing all day, every day. You know, and I did it before I had my course, right? I was just figuring things out on my own. So I was spending hours and, you know, but I think for the average person, I know and even if you have a full-time job, what you're saying is a really good point is just, you just do it every day. And if you have a super busy life or you have a family or you're in school, just cut off. If, if it's not an hour, do 30 minutes. If it's not 30 minutes, do 15, if you really don't have the time, but I would push, as you're saying, push yourself so that it's top of mind. I think that's really the key is that like the stuff you focus on, you tend to attract more and more. And I've heard that story again and again from other students who maybe took longer, but most of them, what they're telling me is like, they'll say, oh, it took me longer. But I say, well, what, what does that mean? And what most people say is that, well, it took me a long time to actually do what you did, which is put that, you know, focus and consistent action. And so like, maybe they bought the course, they didn't really look at it. And then they did like a little bit here and there, and they did maybe an hour a week or something. And then it's when they do it every day or they get really, really focused on it. That's when they get the results. And it's that way with anything, guys. This is good general advice on, you know, accomplishing goals. Uh, so anyway, man, thanks for sharing your story and sharing yourself. Um, it, you know, I think you have a really great, inspiring, motivating presence. Um, I think it's great. You know, I appreciate you offering to support people. You guys, you can reach out to Lance and um, we're going to get you, I think, even more involved in the community. Uh, you already have been very helpful there. And again, I'm, I'm just I'm so happy for you. Enjoy your work-life balance, your new career, getting out from debt. <laughs> and, you know, uh, yeah, let's stay in touch and, you know, we'll talk soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Seth.